Aloha and welcome to A Course in Miracles workbook for students. Today we're on lesson 158. And the idea for today is today I learn to give as I receive. What has been given you? The knowledge that you are a mind in mind and purely mine, sinless forever, wholly unafraid, because you were created out of love. That's been given us. Nor have you left your source, the knowledge that we haven't left our source, that we remain as we were created. This was given you as knowledge, which you cannot lose. It was given as well, to every living thing, for by that knowledge only does it live. You have received all this. No one who walks the world but has received it. It is not, it is not this knowledge which you give, for that is what creation gave. All this cannot be learned. What then? are you to learn to give today? So, <clears throat> our lesson yesterday evoked a theme found early in the text. Experience cannot be shared directly in the way that vision can. This was yesterday. Into his presence what I enter now. So experience cannot be shared, according to A Course in Miracles, directly in the way that vision can. The revelation that the Father and the Son are one will come in time to every mind. Yet is that time determined by the mind itself and not taught? And yesterday, you know, we had... Uh, a pretty intense lesson into his presence what I enter now with lots of uh, this is going to happen today and that's going to happen today and it's going to be um, really wonderful and basically it was saying this is going to be a new day for you and we're moving on to more devotion and, and so on and I just wanted to to say to someone who experienced, didn't really have some of those experiences yesterday. Because this lesson today might explain one of the reasons why. It says that this revelation that was part of what we experienced yesterday and experiencing yourself it says that this revelation that the father and the son are one it will come in time to every mind but it's up to the mind itself to determine that time and so the fact that you're doing a course of miracles and you're on lesson 158 is a sign probably even if you have resistance to this course that you are starting to get into a place where you can really see and perceive some of these truths for yourself as, as a your own experience <laughs> but this particular experience that we um, it talked about yesterday to, uh, today it will be given you to feel a touch of heaven though you will return to passive learning yet you have come far enough to alter time sufficiently to raise above the laws and walk into eternity a while well if you didn't have this experience yesterday then I just want to encourage you that that's, that that's okay not everybody does that this is up to According to the Course, each mind, whenever this uh, 
revelation of the Father and the Son being one comes to it with this waking up. The time is set already. It appears to be quite arbitrary, yet there is no step along the road that anyone takes but by chance. In other words, nothing that, no thing that's happening in our life, none of our circumstances, none of that, according to the Chorus, is by chance. It has already been taken by Him. So every, every step of the way, we've already taken these steps, <clears throat> although He has not yet embarked on it. For time but seems to go in one direction, we but undertook a journey that is over. <laughs> Yet it seems to have a future still unknown to us. So that's where we are, you guys, on this journey that's already over. Time is a trick, a sight of hand, a vast illusion in which figures come and go as if by magic. Yet there is a plan behind appearances that does not change. <clears throat> I love this, the script. For my life, your life, the script is already written. When experience will come to end, your doubting has been set. So if you're... Um, feeling a little anxious and I felt this before doubting about the course about things that you're learning in the course maybe these things aren't happening fast enough for you or maybe you don't feel like they're having an at all this is here the course is addressing that this experience will come that will end your doubting and the time has already been set so there you go. For we but see the journey from the point at which it ended. Looking back on it, imagining we make it once again. Reviewing mentally what has gone by. And that's kind of the Course's description of our life. We're on this journey that we've taken before, we're reviewing it, but it seems that we ha still don't know what's gonna happen next. <laughs> we don't know. But, it's kinda like Groundhog Day, you know, it's, it's happened before, we've done this before. Deja vu. So, a teacher does not give experience because he did not learn it. It revealed itself to him at its appointed time, just like it will for us at its, its appointed time. But vision is his gift. This he can give directly, for Christ's knowledge is not lost. <clears throat> because he has a vision, he can give to anyone who asks. The Father's will and His are joined in knowledge. Yet there is a vision which the Holy Spirit sees because the mind of Christ beholds it too. Here is the joining of the world of doubt and shadows made with the intangible. Here is the quiet place within the world where it's made holy by forgiveness and by love, here are all contradictions reconciled, for here the journey ends. Experience unlearned, untaught, unseen is merely there. So the experience is, is on the way. <clears throat> this, is a, this is an experience, an encounter, this course. It's not anything like traditional uh, religious teaching where you're you're learning facts to be memorized and believed and to put your faith in 
<clears throat> this is we're going for having an actual experience that will remove all of our doubts. So, experience unlearned, untaught, unseen is merely there. This is beyond our goal for it transcends what needs to be accomplished. Our concern is with Christ's vision. And this, Christ's vision, we can and we want to attain. Christ's vision has one law. <clears throat> it does not look upon a body and mistake it for the Son whom God created. So it does look upon a body. It sees bodies, but it doesn't mistake the body for the Son of God. <laughs> it beholds a light beyond the body, an idea beyond what can be touched, a purity undimmed by errors, pitiful mistakes, and fearful thoughts of guilt from dreams of sin. It sees no separation, and it looks on everyone, on every circumstance, all happenings and all events without the slightest fading of the light that it sees. So this is a description of Christ's vision. This is what we want. This can be taught and must be taught by all who would achieve it. It requires but the recognition that the world cannot give anything that faintly can compare with this in value, this vision, nor set up a goal that does not merely disappear when this has been perceived. <clears throat> and this you give today. So see no one as a body today. I mean, you see they're a body, but that's not who they are. So see no one as a body. Greet him, whoever you see, as the Son of God he is, acknowledging that he is one with your holiness, your sinlessness, your perfection. Thus are his sins forgiven him, for Christ has vision that has power to overlook them all. In his forgiveness, Christ's forgiveness, are they all gone? Unseen by one, they merely disappear. Because a vision of the holiness that lies beyond them comes to take their place. All right. So... <clears throat> It matters not what form they took, nor how enormous they appeared to be, nor who seemed to be hurt by them. They are no more. And all the effects that they seem to have, that these sins, these horrible things seem to have, are gone with them, undone, and never to be done. Thus do you learn to give as you receive. So you give this Christ's vision away to others as you receive it, and then you learn that you have it for yourself. You learn that it's given to you because you've given it away. That's sort of like the principle, giving and receiving. Thus do you learn to give as you receive, and thus... Christ's vision looks on you as well. This lesson is not difficult to learn if you remember in your brother you but see yourself. So if you, if you remember that in your brother you but see yourself, this idea of always giving to yourself is not hard to learn. But um, if you don't, if you see in your brother someone else, then it's hard 
to believe that by giving to that person, you're actually giving to yourself. <laughs> This lesson is not difficult to learn. If you remember, in your brother, you but see yourself. If he be lost in sin, so must you be. If you see light in him, your sins have been forgiven by yourself. Each brother whom you meet today provides another chance to let Christ's vision shine on you and offer you the peace of God. It matters not when revelation comes, for that is not of time. Yet time has still one gift to give in which true knowledge is reflected in a way so accurate its image shares its unseen holiness. Its likeness shines with its immortal love. We practice seeing with the eyes of Christ today. And by the holy gifts we give, Christ's vision looks upon ourselves as well. So there we are. That's our lesson today. Learning how to give as I receive. Learning how to receive and give the vision of Christ. So that's our lesson for today, 158. Bless you and... May the light just increase in you as you follow it today, as you listen and try to do your best to follow the Holy Spirit, your true God, your true teacher. Bless you, and I will see you tomorrow. Mahalo.